I think that's it. That's the whole ride. Hey, Sue! Let's see if I can raise her that way. Hey, Sue! Can I have a bag of your sugar? I don't know where she goes. And everybody goes, oh, she was just here. Oh, she's that way. I don't know. All right, so in your schedule, you've got A, B, C, E, and F. That means you're D block. And all students take the, this class, which is called Farm Seminar, and that's where the farmers are going to explain what goes on in our farm and other yeah. farms around the world and the country. Okay. And you will have, we need to look at these lists. Have you looked at the, like? Not really. Let's see if we can find you. There you are. OK, here, go write that down. Thursday afternoon is Science Hike. These ones, these three, you'll have stuff like, oh, maybe you'll be in the Harvest Kitchen okay. scrubbing vegetables, or you might be shoveling snow if we get a big storm, or moving wood. Or Then we have the long school meeting. That's where we all get together and talk about stuff that's going on or things that have come up during the week. Anytime we get together, I'm always going to talk to you about or check in with you about your schoolwork the dorm, like how are you eating, how are you sleeping, or how are the friends going, how is that whole thing, are you enjoying the weekend, what went on, how did you do? We'll, we'll check in about those nuts and bolts every week. Another station's in here. You're, take, you're taking the glasses. I like to take them two at a time. There's something to dump here, just like that, okay? Tea and tea bags down there, and I put the mugs down here. Now, you'll see some teachers scraping like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then doing this. Don't fall into that trap. Use it like a snow shovel, not like a paintbrush. One, two, and then a wipe, not the tap. Tap doesn't work, takes long, and it sounds bad. You'll get some stacks of things. As soon as you get a little stack of stuff, throw it over here, because the longer it soaks, the better. Here's what you do. Dump, dump that in here. Set the mug there. And get it at get it at supper. Perfect. My name is Jack Cruzy, and I, uh, I, t I teach some courses here, and you probably know that I, um, I teach you how to wash dishes. And I've been asked to talk about safety today. And you've seen a little bit of the campus. You've seen the dorm, you've been on the out you know, outer loop, maybe you've seen the barns, and you know, you've been around some of the things. You, you know what's going on here. You've been on the website, so forth. So uh, what I want you to do always is imagine, how am I, how am I gonna die, okay? How, how, how will I perish? That's it. How, how will I perish in the next 10 minutes? That's what I want. That's the main thought I want you to carry through your mountain school semester so that you get, so that you get up to closing ceremony. If you just keep that in mind all the time, okay? So that's what, that's what we're going to do. We're going to talk about some of, those, uh, some of those ways now so you have those in mind, all right? Here's, here's another sort of general theme lesson. <laughs> this chainsaw just looks really scary. And, I, and I'm not, I'm not going to start it now. Why would I inside? Uh, but it, it, it just announces its own danger. 
you're never gonna get hurt with a chainsaw here, okay? Nobody ever cuts their hand off with a chainsaw, okay? <laughs> because it just announces its own danger, all right? People get hurt with the chainsaw after they make their cut and they think they're done and the blade is slowing down and they lower it to here, okay? Or they're just taking the lightest little touch of something and they hit the bar here and it flies up and hits them in the head. But it's never, so someone using a chainsaw might get hurt, but you're not going to because you're gonna hear this thing, you'd be backing way off, okay? The same is true of a tractor driving by with clanking chains and a, you know, a big, uh, I don't know, manure wagon on the back. You're gonna be backing away from it. It's, it's huge, it's noisy, it's scary. What's gonna hurt you is, is the little C-Max, the, the Prius that, <laughs> that starts backing up silently, all right? And it's such a little light car and it's good for you and it's green, it's, you know what I mean? It's like the Prius, you know? Yeah, the Prius will crush you because you're just not even, you're just gonna like, who's afraid of a Prius, all right? And it will still, it'll still run you right down. Okay, all right, this tool, another one that announces its own danger, this will never, <laughs> like, this, it's not sharp to begin with, okay, and also, I don't even know what it's used for. <laughs> so, so <laughs> I've been here a long time, never seen that thing used. Seven of these hard ones. Oh boy. Let's do a hard one. Let's do a hard one. Sand falling into a pile or yeah, water right. pouring into a cylindrical bowl. I don't think so. Spherical that iron ball so coated with ice. Bowl sounds a little more interesting. Ladder. Baseball diamond. How about this? Baseball diamond. Which one? 17? Okay, here's a baseball diamond. So I'm assuming we got right angles, right? What else do we know? What do they say? 90. 90 feet to the first base? Okay, what else? What do we, what do we want to call this side as it, as it changes? What shall we call this? Q. Q? Okay. <laughs> Q. Can you make an equation? We need an equation to start with. Take the derivative, what do we get? 2B. 2B. Mm. Plus zero. D. D what, D what? D B D T. D B D T, yeah. Okay. Equals negative 13.4. And what is the unit? Per Feet per second. Now we just have to, I always look at this answer and say, well, does this make sense? Does it make sense that this person is getting 13 feet closer per second? Yeah, probably, I guess. It's reasonable. It's not like we got a thousand or something, right? I think we got it. All right, let's do one more. These are like candy for us. And meanwhile, we've got Lucifer down here. He flies out of hell, comes here and perches on the wall, and he watches him for a while, all right, and figures out what he's gonna do. And on this day, Eve, she, she goes, uh, she says, you know, we'll get more done if we separate. You know, we'll be more efficient if we, it's what happens with the backpack vacuuming chore. Oh, let's split up. You do recycling, I'll do garbage, you do vacuuming, and then the whole thing falls apart. Nobody can move the, you know, so they break up the team. That's, that's, that's what happens that day. Adam goes, okay, that's all right. You know, he's sort of an idiot. And he says, okay, I'll, I'll be here, you go over there. So she goes over by the lake where there's an orchard, all right, and she starts doing some work. And then Satan sees her, and she, by the way, is beautiful. She is so beautiful, okay? Like Adam, gorgeous man, okay? But Eve, far more, here's what, here's what he does. Is he, is he sort of comes in here as a snake. And he goes, look how beautiful you are. And, he, and she goes, oh, how come you're talking? And he goes, oh, I can talk. You know, I, can, I can talk now, I've got a great mind. I'm supposed to be a snake, but I can talk now. And she goes, oh, wow, how, how is that? And he goes, here's the trick. I ate of that tree over there. When she bites of the apple, what happens? Nothing happens. No one's gonna blame Eve for getting tricked by Lucifer, the second most intelligent creature in the, in the, in the universe. Nobody blames her. 
but she eats the apple and starts to worry. Then she goes to Adam. She goes, Adam, I, look, I took a bite out of this apple. It's from the forbidden tree. What should I do? And Adam goes, oh no. He goes, this is my, this is my person. This is my favorite person. He oh. says, but God told me not to eat of this apple. And yet here you are. And what if, what if he takes you away? He says, I'll go with you. And then he eats of the apple. So he makes the decision. Should I take the advice or should I, should I place my loyalty in something earthly or something heavenly? Should I obey the, 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 the God of the entire universe, the creator of all this, or my friend? Okay? <laughs> and he chooses friend, and that's, that's when the earth falls. And they're kicked out of the, they're kicked out of the garden. All right? Out they go. Paradise is over, and they wander the desert of brambles and thickets, and they have to scrape a living by the sweat of their brow from then on, okay? That's what happens, All right? That's, that's the story as we know it from Genesis and sort of retold by John Milton. Ishmael's going to have a different version tonight, okay? I gave up my job to come here. So when we first came here, I didn't have a job. It was a little bit of a nightmare, I gotta say. We, because we were working in the summers at that time on this camp on Lake Winnipesaukee. We had a party at the end of the camp and he was lighting sparklers in his hand and the whole thing, the whole package of sparklers burnt, flash flamed or whatever you call that. And he had this enormous, um, blister on his hand. He couldn't even, it was wrapped up. His thumb was like this big around. It was a mess. So we came, we came in here kind of the walking wounded. And, you know, it was rough. My parents came up to visit. They said something like, well, you know, maybe you should get that toilet out of the, far the yard of the farmhouse before the kids come. There was just this toilet, this random toilet sitting there, and nobody, it was like the last thing that anybody was worrying about, you know? We wanted to make sure there were enough beds. Was, was it dirty in the rooms? <laughs> and, you know, where we worked before, Nancy and David Grant worked there also. They came up with this idea for a semester school, and I think Jack called up David and said, hey, by the way, and do you need somebody <laughs> to teach English? Yeah, right? I do remember one time, it was after lunch in the very beginning, and we were in the driveway. And it was, bef it was after the morning classes, and it was, I think it was like Elliot, Jack, David, maybe Nancy was probably there, Kevin Mattingly. And they were standing in the driveway kind of going, okay, well, what are we going to do this afternoon? What, do you have anything we could do? Do you have anything we could do? And they're trying to like, oh, John Conover was definitely there. And they're trying to figure out, okay, what are we going to do with these kids this afternoon? Because every afternoon it was like figuring out something to do. And everybody, the cool thing was that everybody did everything. Like if you went to the woods, everybody went to the woods. And if you like... I don't know, had to harvest something, then all the teachers went. It's like everybody was in on everything just because that's what we did, you know? It wasn't kind of like, oh, yeah, well, this is my free time. There was no free time. It was just, hold on, here we go. That was pretty, pretty crazy. It was pretty crazy, but it was a lot of fun, and the kids were so game to do anything. They were unbelievable. Look at all these. Wow.
one time a graduate came back and uh, said that the mountain school felt a little bit like a one night stand. That it was here, it was very good, it was really, you know, it was excellent to be a part of this place. And then it was suddenly something in their past that they never, never connected with again or thought to, despite reunions and these alumni colleges and so forth. I thought, okay, that's, I think it happens more with students whose lives aren't so connected with, I don't know, New England or hiking or organic farming. Kids who come from the city, often students of color, just sort of feel like they're uh, maybe guests here. So I sort of make it my little, my little project is within, within a year of somebody leaving here, they have to read a postcard from me. It's funny how the, the very early graduates are right front and center in Sue's and my memory. So it's easy to picture them, you know, the ones who were here first, second, third semesters. That first faculty, I think we had one, one, one set of teachers in their 20s, like one, one in, a couple in the 30s, 40s, 50s, we had John Conover, who's 61. So we had, we had every, every, uh, every decade represented, every time of life. John Conover, who had you know, seven kids and a million grandchildren, retired from St. Johnsbury Academy, planning to go back, at, back to his farm, and then he heard about the mountain school and said, I gotta be a part of this. So he came and taught math, ran Underwood Dormitory, He became um, a model for me, well, in a lot of ways, but one was um, we, we felled all these trees into far field uh, in the fall because we had no firewood. We were starting school in the fall, no wood to burn for the winter. So we had a, a logger come in and drop these huge maples onto the field, bucked them up, split them. That was our wood, but let this gigantic, mess of slash on on the field on the on the on the hay field pasture and we started dragging it and we took you know took a whole work period to make not much progress at all and then the snow came and said well we'll get it in the spring came spring the snow melted and it was all gone this wasn't a wasn't a stick of brush on that field I asked John about it. I said, what do you, you know anything about it? He said, oh yeah. He said, well, I, um, I walk Polly every morning, his little dog. He said, I just, that's where I walk to. And every, every morning I drag, drag two or three branches off the, off the pasture. So for the nine months of winter, seven days a week, John Conover was just picking away at that, at that job. And I thought that's a pretty good that's a pretty good way of doing things. show you the coolest thing. A guy making a, a wooden water pipe. And by that, I don't mean like a hookah. Watch this. Watch this lady making this. So cool. Hey, how are you doing, Barbara? Good to see you. Good to see Look at these guys, grandchildren. Share your favorite part of the fair. This is easy, the butter churning. Just <laughs> right, right that there. Hello, friend, how are you doing? You're liking the retirement? I am. Oh, that's pretty good. And just making music over here, this is great. Hey, Billy, yeah, 
Where are you from, Billy? I'm yeah. from Oklahoma. Oklahoma, yeah. It didn't sound like a like a Vermont accent to me. Yeah. That's good. Well, thanks for coming all this way. Yes, my good enough. Thank you for being here. All right. Thank you. Hi, you guys. Wood splitters. Oh, that sounds like Kevin Jacobs. Some, some of you guys are trained up. Oh, that's true. That's true. All right. How, how, you gotta win <laughs> Billy, Billy was just explaining to me that you should. Billy will explain to you how to how to how to make it ring. He said if you hit the f the front of that thing, de dead flat, you'll you'll ring that bell every time. Don't forget the squat, ma'am. Yeah, the same the same form, right? Same form. Same form, Dean. Hold up. All right, Dean. Toward the front. You want to hit it toward the front, right, Dean? Right. Get the money hammer. Get the yeah, money get hammer. The oh, my Get the lightsaber, man. Hey, Billy, I don't know if they make cotton candy out of maple sugar in Oklahoma, but that stuff's, awesome. that stuff's gold. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Isn't that great? Good to know you. All right. I taught those kids how to split wood, so I'm, I'm, I'm proud of them. Stick it through. Stick it, everybody, stick them, stick them right out, 3D. Yeah, there we go, three, two, one, zero. Nice. You guys seen Sue? No. Okay. Here's a quilt that I made. You want to see this one? Yeah. Let's get it out. This I made, I made a quilt for Ida because she was having a terrible moment in her life. And I called it, Ida Tames the Animals. And this is the leftover pieces. And I can show you where Ida is taming the animals. Here she is right here. See, she's got a little parrot. And then the little tiger. Anyway, and there's some deer and stuff. Ida tames the animals. There, okay. That's nice, huh? It's kind of crappy fabric, but I think it'll be all right. We, um, I make a quilt every year with this woman in town, and we make a, it's a raffle quilt. And throughout the summer and the fall. We sell raffle tickets at different events, and then the money goes to a scholarship fund in town. And we now have so much money in our endowment thing that we, uh, we raise money, but we also use money that comes from the interest off the, off the uh, endowment. Now, if I were making a million of these, then I would take it over here. Do what I call squaring it up. The work periods have been just so great. We moved a ton of wood. Yesterday we were down to the sugarhouse putting up uh, pine siding. Today we have the last of the harvest from the garden. We're going to go through leeks. And I'm just, I'm just really thankful for you all for the work you're doing. So that's all. Thanks.
Trail work today? Yes. All right. And if you're interested in some axe work, we've got a bunch down here that need to be. What? Yeah, we've got four trees here that need to be uh, limbed. Okay. Yeah. That's in fact, before you. Yeah. Why doesn't one of you come do that? Who, who loves the axe more, most? that I'm doing this so well. The trick, try to keep it as straight as you can and use the most blade that you can. That is nice. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Look at you guys sawing and and holding. We just, we're just almost done. And I need a little help. Yeah, can I, re can I make a recommendation? Yes. Uh, Lean on that now. I mean, you could still get Izzy to stand there and talk to you and lean on it. But it would be a lot easier for her. It wouldn't be woggling around in the world. Isn't that nice? Jack, do you know what, what Harry Potter house you are? Uh, I don't uh, I don't follow the Harry Potter thing. I just uh, I kept meaning to get into it after the popularity died down. And I'm still waiting. <laughs> Sam. Looks good in here. You know what I like the best about it? What's that? It's already filled with junk. I know, right? It's like, it's I'm a real sugar house. I'm starting to see why, uh, when I started moving the lumber over there, I was like, oh, I see why Mark had that little stash underneath the old one. Because I don't know where to put that lumber. Anyway, yeah, it's filling up fast. Wow, this looks great, man. It looks really good. Well, I'm also happy, Jack. I was worried with Pat and me as the design people as two not very tall people, I was worried it was not going to be tall enough, but yeah. it seems fine. Oh, okay. That's been stuck there since we roofed, and I just can't quite get it, so I'm just waiting for the right... Oh, okay. Here we go. That was it. Eventually, there'll be a metal grate on here that I'll put in here. But the idea is it would will be right here. So I'm just throwing the wood straight from there into there rather than this movement every four minutes, which can get old. So this is this is pretty this is pretty nice. And the best part, it's adjustable. So you know if they replace me at some point with a taller sugar maker, we can just go down and Oh you gravel. just dig some of the gravel just out. Dig the gravel. It's adjustable. Alright. That was Dave the painter's idea. That's what we should do for our desks. Rather than build them up higher, Go we down. should just dig, dig, yeah, dig out some pits yeah. in front of the regular desk. I like it. this one what, what are you looking at this one here you think that's a good one 
I think it's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> well, should you, can you measure it? 62. It's perfect. 182? Oh. That's not tall enough. Nope. Oh, I don't think that's a good one. Really? It's got to have a few on the bottom. Oh, I'm looking at a different one. I'm looking at this one. Oh. Remember one year we didn't have anything, there were no branches like for the first six feet, and it was fine. It's true. Nice not to fill the whole living room with tree. This is right from the tippy top. OK. Is it big enough? Yeah, it's perfect. Apricot orange, orange marmalade. I don't think kids like orange marmalade. We got cereal. And oh, also, look, God. you guys, oh you guys muffins. <laughs> Two halves. I'm opening up for it now. Oh, you are? Yes, I want one. Oh, OK. Do you want, I'm making one more. Will somebody else eat another muffin? Jody Rozovsky was here in the fall of 84, and her mom came to visit and said, what are you going to do? What are you going to do on the last day? And we said, we don't know what we're going to do tomorrow. <laughs> but what do you, you have any, what do you have anything, you have a suggestion? She said, yeah, do this. How about this? Everybody puts something into a box, and then in 10 years, open it up. This is classic. I must have put this in there. This was the uh, chaga that Emily Sarden and I drank on Solo when we um, realized we'd forgotten the coffee. Had to harvest it from a tree out there. The best thing always is just this little, here's Sophie Ashworth's note. She wrote a little letter to herself. And uh, those are always great for the ceremony. There. Now, you can seal that up. These little clips. And then this will be, this will be the trunk we use for the ceremony in the morning. Just looks better than this. is running the reunion 10 years from this June. We'll be able to find the stuff. We say that we bury these things. They are sort of underground, but. Yeah, that was a mistake we made for the first few years, is just putting them in wooden boxes. And then the mice would just say, oh, this, this little box is such a nice, nice place to have a nest. Yeah, it was the beginning of entropy, where all the molecules began to sort of mix with each other, and, and uh, organic matter in there, too. And it was, yeah, that, those first few reunions were, um, were, were unappealing for that reason. All right. <clears throat> Jack, remind me how this goes. <laughs> got a whole, got a whole lot of stuff in the kitchen. You got a whole lot of stuff there, too. Too much stuff, baby, and nowhere to put it. And too much of me for you. I need a solo, a real solo. I need a solo, solo. Things close in. Is that, yeah, I get it. Yep. 
Don't get excited. I get out of town. I get out of touch. I need a good place, clean, well lighted. Back out of all this now too much. This, this is real brook right here. Or at least our, um, our little, our little part of it. Flows down to the bigger one down there and we're up this way to the left. Now be careful here. My advice is to get slightly wet shoes and not try to step on the tops of the slippery rocks. So that's Will. He's way up on that ridge. It says, please leave more TP. Yikes. And here, is the Kinsman One base camp. <laughs> well, I was hoping that all flags would be up and I could knock them down. Yeah, none. No such luck. Two are up. How's your book coming? I switched to a different one for a little bit. There's no reason to put off building a fire. Yeah. I've learned to tie them in little knots so the strips don't all lie flat on top of each other. And if they say they need anything, just tell them no and run. The right thing, yeah, the right thing to write is, yep, get it to you in the morning. Yeah. The root root crop. These these are actually the uh, the carrots that uh, that won the Tunbridge World's Fair blue ribbon, actually red ribbon. They didn't win because they're supposed to be of even size. You can see that they're sort of of even size, but this one was trimmed to to get that way, I guess. And. Uh, these potatoes are from the root cellar. They're not the winners. And this is, these are not ours, but these came from, uh, from a store called Trader Joe's. It's down, it's a store down by where Ida lives. We were down there and I thought, I thought that it'd be a pretty good base camp treat to have. These are called um, artichokes. <laughs> One of the, I don't know, misperceptions about camping, or solo camping anyway, is that what you're really after is time for deep reflection. You know, thinking back on your life and seeing into the life of things, you know, tapping into a spirit, emotion, 
I know not what, whose dwelling is the light of setting suns, etc. But really, the best part about it is just staying busy. Lots of projects. Get your mind off of stuff. The building of the perfect shelter and the, the adjusting of the trucker's hitches, you know. Pretty soon we'll have to dump the pools of water off our tarp and reimagine where the strings go, all this all the fussiness of homemaking. Oh, and of course the the preparation of the artichokes. I can picture Tina Hartel marking out a square yard of rock, or square meter, she was a scientist, and, uh, and measuring leaf fall hour by hour, taking notes on it. One person, Emily Boren, came out, Emily Adler Boren. She found a little crevice in the rock. Maybe it was right down here where these were, these were flowing. And uh, she lined up this sort of Andy Goldsworthy channel of leaves. Jim Leonard sitting on that rock in his crazy creek reading some, some novel. Anyway. We've got boiling water now. So that means we can have coffee or tea or chaga. But you can get a handful of it, sort of. How are we doing, Jack? <laughs> oh, hi, Kareem. Can I sneak up on you? Trying, trying to uh, harvest some more chaga. Oh. I got a pot of it on, and I don't really have very much. You just didn't get a, a whole lot of it, but... Ah, that's good chug. <laughs> There's no flavor. <laughs> Do you taste anything at all? I think I'm going to put the chanterelles in with the rice. I think they'll get lost in the... Uh, these are chanterelles that Sue brought me. But I brought this vinaigrette, so I thought that would be pretty good on the lamb. You know, we could say uh, we had uh, barbecued boneless shoulder of lamb with a rosemary vinaigrette marinade. You know, it'd be sacrilege to call this barbecue in North Carolina, Jack. Oh, right. <laughs> right. This is grilling. This is you don't invite oh. people over for a grill. I don't know. For a grilling. Thought, I haven't thought that one. Come to our house for a grilling. Right. And you line people up and go, you idiot. You. <laughs> Look at yourself. You, you call that a husband, Beth? <laughs> Look at him. God. All that was behind him now. The need to think, the need to write, other needs. That's a line from <clears throat> The Big Two-Hearted River, Part One. I know that it's written after Hemingway's experience in World War I, going camping again in the way he used to before the war and that it's about trying to find some peace, 
some freedom from pain, some freedom from memory by focusing on the details of the natural world and trying to keep it free of complication. He could have camped anywhere on the river, but this was good. Right here, right now, this, this is good. Maybe there's something about that focus on immediate needs, you know, for the students. That's why a little weather is good. Focus on keeping the rain away from their sleeping bag. The focus on boiling the ramen water perfectly. S -s Small radius of things to be in charge of. It's pretty nice. I want to give you some advice on how to uh, pack up this afternoon. Your, your dorm head will have a piece of masking, uh, masking tape and a, and a Sharpie, and you want to write your name right on it. And your, uh, putting your, your dorm name on it isn't a bad idea either. And then set it outside the dorm. Put the stuff outside. Trash and recycling, same thing. Put it outside, all right? Don't label it Chet. Or you'll, it'll end up in, you know, where, Needham, Mass, or wherever, wherever you're from, OK? Or that'd be a good, that'd be a pretty good prank, actually. <laughs> just, just label the trash, Chet. <laughs> okay, and uh, and see what happens. That's pretty good. Ah, uh, Cruzy, I don't see any masking tape though. Really? What's this? No. Eliza, we gave it to Eliza. Shoot. I was a little bit. How's it going? Okay. Making progress? Yeah, I don't think it's gonna fit in here. It's not gonna fit. Mush it. Do you know where that do you know where that masking tape is, Eliza? Oh well. Oh yay. Perfect. Okay, so I'm gonna make you some name tags for your bags. Okay. Thank you. How are you feeling, Mika? I'm sad. This is not this is not a fun process. Marion. Okay, this is for the time capsule. What are you putting in? An apron that's been hanging on our wall the whole semester. Oh. And then I wore it for our music video. <laughs> <laughs> no injuries. I Come on. Oh, don't water. forget all that stuff on the ceiling. <laughs> you guys are such a mess. You have to look like you want to find them. You've got to find them. Ha! Huh. Found one. Got my mushroom knife. I gave away, in financial aid this year, almost $900,000. I feel like the school has something that people want and need. Like, kids do so well here, and their families are really glad to have them here, you know? It's like, I really think there's something good here. And it's a good spot, and it attracts really good people to work here, so far anyway, I think. Like, there are people whose heart is in it. 
enough of those kind of people that carry it and keep it going. It's, a, it's pretty, it's pretty um, amazing the kind of people that want to work here, too. I think that's a big part of it. And the kids who come are awesome. But if you had, like, sort of mediocre faculty, I don't know. I don't know if it would really work out. People wouldn't stick around, I, I think. I don't know. Maybe that's just because I stuck around. <laughs> and I think that's the right thing to do. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, but there's something about it. There are, bu there are a fair number of people who have stuck around, you know? My first painted trillium. Yeah, this isn't gonna work at all. I'm gonna go this way. When I found it, it was just a clump of wet leaves. And I started digging and I went, oh, this is what they drank. <laughs> and I found some stones that lined it. Years ago, my friend Jack Ruzzi, for my wedding gift, gave me this broken drinking goblet. And he knew just how I'd use it. Well, that's pure, pure water. Defining image of my life is this place where the water surges out of the spring. It's been coming out of there for millennia. And for millennia, all this quartz rock that I've harvested from the stone wall and brought down here and circled the spring with it has deteriorated and you could see these little flecks of quartz just surging up and settling back down as the water just pushes out of that corner into the spring. Fresh water all the time, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. So for me, when I'm looking for something true and real and enduring, that's the image that I come to. Good morning, everybody. We are about to have a ceremony that is unlike any ceremony we have ever had here because uh, it is defined by the voices of this group and this group only. And the group is not just 45, it's all the teachers as well. We have a tradition that started a long time ago uh, when the Mount School was first founded as a semester school to have a time capsule. So at your 10 year reunion, uh, we will reopen this box and take a look at what's inside and uh, have another ceremony that's not too dissimilar for this where we sort of talk about our lives since. And we're going to start right away with Jesse. I was thinking about doing a very specific thank you, but I realized it would just not do justice to the sort of magic we've facilitated here. So I'm just gonna thank every single person that has been here this semester for their openness. As a reminder to myself, not to forget the sort of magic that these amazing people brought to this place, I'm putting this note in the box. So if 10 years down the road, I have gone down the wrong path and forgotten how amazing this place was, I will be reminded and I will correct myself. <laughs> I just want to say thank you to every single person here, the faculty and the students, for making me the most confident person that I've ever been. It teaches math, also teaches the rest of us how to be advisors. Ministers financial aid, there's a lot of other things besides. Anchor of Connor, Sue Cruzy. <laughs> I want to 
want to talk about. Determination. These are things I've seen here. Determination. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Resilience. And gratitude. These are things I've seen you practice. And notice that I did not include perfection. That, just forget about that. <laughs> just moving through life. You don't have to be perfect. You just have to keep after it. All right, yeah. then, off yes. you go. Yeah. I want to thank everybody for giving me a chance, because I, back home, I don't get a lot of chances, and I want to thank you for that. I'm putting a letter to myself. I wrote a letter to everybody here, but I didn't write one to myself, and I forgot about myself. And I want to write it to myself to remember that I get to be happy, too. Of humanities and English teacher, Jack Cruzy. There was a, a man um, named John Conover. You, you, you really would like this guy, and, and he would have adored you. Uh, he was our first math teacher here, and uh, he told me once that um, that a farmer in a, in a day could produce a, a cord of wood with a bow saw. And uh, he sort of taught me the, the, the patience of that and the skill behind it, a skill that you've all learned. I don't know if you know this, but uh, we produced 14.3 cords of wood this semester uh, with these tools, including the, the splitting mall, and, um, which, which uh, translates to 1,430 gallons of number two heating oil, all right, that, that uh, we're not going to uh, pump out of the earth and, and burn to heat our buildings and, and water, so that's, that's, that's excellent work. Anyway, this, um, his final year here was, was, was 1989, and um, I had wood crew that fall with him, and, uh, and so I, I, uh, I made this little sculpture for him, and, uh, and, I, and I put it in the box where, where it sat for 10 years. And then uh, 10 years later, I pulled it out of the box, and it's been in my classroom ever since. And I just thought, it's just been a long time since I've enjoyed the woods with, uh, with a group of students as much as I had this semester. And I just, um, I, just I, love, I love your work out there, the, the, uh, the attention you paid to it, the long and strong, smooth and even stroke with the bow saw, and, uh, and the accumulation of, 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 good, uh, of good fuel and, uh, that, we'll, that we'll count on for the next year or so. So thank you. seems to be perfect when it's the middle of fall and you're sitting with someone that does chef's crew with you during golden hour and everything just seems to be perfect and just right. I want to thank all of the students for the endless hugs, the I love you's that became so easy to say yet never lost their meaning. Thank you for making this experience unique. And I want to end with a a hopeful poem uh, by Gary Snyder. It's called For the Children. And, um, and it's, I think it's about um, how we can be and an attitude we can take in the, in, the, uh, in the face of statistics that otherwise would overwhelm. For the children, the rising hills, the slopes, of statistics lie before us, the steep climb of everything going up, up as we all go down. In the next century, or the one beyond that, they say, are valleys, pastures. We can meet there in peace if we make it. To climb these coming crests, one word to you, to you and your children, stay together, learn the flowers, go light.
Yeah, write me a postcard, okay? Especially if something really funny happens. I need to have like the, the weird food on it. Yes, yes, good. Ricardo. So on, man. Really glad to know you. Oh, your parents are really proud of you. Do you know that? Yeah, they adore you. I think you're an amazing guy, and and uh, I can't wait to see what happens to the world of astrophysics in the coming decade. You've been an amazing advisor to me. All right, it's been really fun. Okay, so on. Yes. So long, David. song, you know, people are moving west in the expansion, and um, I think they were struck by the night sky. The night sky is part of living here that I've always liked, and so this is um, it's a few verses of this song that I sort of discovered after I knew the main one, uh, which everybody kind of knows. Right now what I'm doing is I'm feeling around in all these buttons to find one that I like. <laughs> stuff in the kitchen you got a whole lot of stuff there too too much stuff baby and nowhere to put it maybe too much of me for you i need a solo a real solo i feel a solo solo things close in i don't get excited i get out of town i get out of touch i find a good place clean well lighted Back out of all this now too much We got a whole lot of stuff on the clutter We got a whole lot of it for free Too much stuff, baby And nowhere to put it, baby Too much of you for me I need a solo, a real solo I feel a solo, solo Nothing to do, nothing aerobic I sit around for days and days I'm making myself claustrophobic It's cabin fever, my teeth malaise
I got a whole lot of stuff in the parlor. You got a whole lot of stuff there too. Too much stuff, baby, baby. and nowhere to put it. Maybe, and too much of me for you. I need a solo, a real solo. I need a solo, solo. No room on the couch, no room at the table, no room at the inn. I need to get out. I'll clean it all up as soon as I'm able, as soon as I get back, no doubt.